Hey, Delano, congratulations, man. Um, what was that moment like for you, hearing your name called and, and being able to share that with your family? Um, man, it was a, just a, you know, a dream come true, just knowing that um, all the hard work you put in and, you know, just everyone in the draft wanting to hear their name called and just being blessed with that opportunity and it being to the Raptors. You know, I feel like just both of my dreams coming true at once, you know, it's kind of surreal to me still, but, you know, I'm just grateful for the opportunity. I'm thankful for, you know, I thank everyone multiple times a day. And, you know, I'm just blessed to be in the position I am, but, you know, I came a long way, but I have a long ways to go. So just knowing that and just continuing to grind. Given where Canada basketball is trending, you, you know you're not going to be the last Canadian drafted by the Raptors, but what did it mean? What does it mean to be the first? Um, what it means to be the first, it means a lot, you know, just to me and my whole family, you know, just coming from where I come from and just, you know, being able to just, you know, make history and just, you know, put on for where I'm from and for my family. You know, I feel like that's what that's what a lot of us do it for is our family. And, you know, just being able to put on for the Banton name and just, you know, being able to show up for my family and just, you know, continue to grind. Thanks, Delano. Congrats again, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Next question goes to Ryan Wallstaff from the Toronto Sun. Hey, Delano. Congratulations. Thank um, you. Usually we say welcome to Toronto, but don't need to do that uh, with you, obviously. I'm just curious, um, some Raptor memories you have of, of growing up watching the team. Uh, a lot, man. I've been, I've been, I've been watching the Raptors for a long time. Just since we had Calderon and Barniani, and then the whole Chris Bosh era. You know, I've been, I've been the Rap a Raptors fan. You know, growing up in Toronto, I feel like that had to be my favorite team. It was my favorite team. Like it was the only team that I ever kept up with in the NBA, like constantly. So you know, I feel like just, just that being that, and just understanding this is where I come from, and just being able to soak up all the love in the city. But my favorite moment was just. You know, just coming to the games. Like I used to come to the games and just knowing that I could be a part of that now and you know, people could come watch me play like how we used to come watch everyone else. So it's great. Cool. And just a follow up, a different follow up. Um obviously playing for Fred Hoiber, he's a guy that played in the NBA coach, uh, executive. I mean, how much does that help with his systems, pro style, just prepare you uh, for the next level? Definitely, definitely. You know, Coach Hoiberg, he's very transparent with me. He told me early on that, you know, just being able to play in the NBA environment, being in college for those two years could kind of help give me a jump start trying to go to where I want to be. And that was the NBA. And, you know, that's what it did. So just going through spring workouts with him for the first month that I was there, when I got to the NBA workouts that we we're doing for pre-draft, you know, that was the stuff that we were doing. We we're doing a lot of three-on-three -three stuff off of pistols and just a lot of actions in NBA offenses that Coach Hoiberg runs in the, you know, in the Division One program. So, you know, I feel like just having that and having someone to talk to who was a player, a coach, and also a part of a front office, you know, you can't take nothing he says for granted. So just soaking up all the information that he gives me and just, you know, never letting it go in one year and come out the other. And, you know, he's, he's very relatable because he also played basketball. So it gave us, you know, a, a sense of trust for each other because he understands where we're coming from as well. So, you know, it was great playing for Coach Hoiberg. You know, I love him. We still talk all the time. He's very proud of me. You know, I'm happy for what they have to come this year. They should be a lot better. So, you know, I'm just happy for everyone. And, you know, I'm glad to be able to share this with them, you know. Great. Thanks. Next question goes to Stephen Long from Sportsnet. Hey, Delano. It's good, uh, it's good to talk to you again. Nice to talk uh, to you. The, the last time that, that we spoke, you, like you mentioned to me just like uh, how much that you believed in yourself. You know, like, like you, you mentioned how, how you bet on yourself to stay in the draft and you believe in yourself. So, like, where does that uh, self-belief, does that confidence of yours, where does it come from? Um, you know, I just feel like it comes from my background, just growing up and having to go against all the odds, you know, in Toronto and from Canada, you know, it's harder to make it out than other guys that like, coming from other places. So, you know, I feel like just that and just having that tougher background that I did, you know, I feel like, you know, you have to bet on yourself and believe in yourself because if you don't, you know, a lot of no one's going to do it for you. So, you know, I learned that at an early age and just to put my mind to something and keep going. And, you know, when when you feel like the sky's the limit for yourself and, you know, you feel like nobody can stop you. And if somebody can, it'll be you and it'll be what you do to stop yourself. So I feel like just trusting in the work that I put in and that I've been putting in through this process and from the years before. So I feel like just all the work that I put in gives me the confidence, you know, believe in myself and bet on myself. And, you know, hopefully everything all pays off. Um, like that, that, that bet on, uh, bet on yourself kind of mantra, like obviously that, like, that's a big thing from, from Fred Van Vliet. So like, like, is, is Fred a player that, that, you know, like you kind of looked up to here as, as your basketball career was, was kind of getting, getting started and how excited are you 
maybe to uh, to play with a guy like Fred. Very excited, man. I'm very excited. You know, I, I, I believe in the development process. You know, I feel like not everyone comes in 100% NBA ready. And, you know, I feel like the guys who, you know, continue to grind and not let those those walls break them down, but you break through the walls. You know, I feel like those guys are the ones who have longevity in the NBA. And I feel like, you know, that's what I'm here to do. You know, I might not make an instant impact today, but I feel like for years to come and just trusting in the work and trusting into the development of the Raptors and knowing their track record of how good they are, of, you know, getting guys better and getting guys contracts. You know, I feel like just just me, my, my confidence and knowing the work I'm going to put in with a great development team, you know, I know the sky's the limit for me. So, you know, playing with Fred VanVleet, it'll be great. He's a guy who went through the development process. You know, I can learn a lot from him and you know, I'm looking forward to learning a lot from him. That's great. Thanks a lot, Delano. And once again, congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate it. Next question is for Doug Smith from the Toronto Star. Delano, congratulations on the draft. It's uh, it's great news. Um, what do you think it's going to say to other kids in Rexdale that that you got to this point, and how do you see yourself as maybe a role model for a kid like you, maybe he's ten years younger? You know, I I feel like it's gonna it's gonna go a long ways. You know, I feel like. Just growing up in Rexdale, you know, just the kids being able to see me, you know, I go to the gyms that they went to all these years and, you know, I know a lot of people and everybody knows it's like a tight knit family growing up where I'm from. So, you know, I feel like just that alone and just everybody being able to see me and know that, okay, coming to this gym and the same gyms that you're going to today could go a long way if you just keep your mind to it. So it's not about where you are, it's about where you plan to be, you know, so that's kind of the things I try and stress to the kids in my neighborhood and just don't don't live like live bigger than what you are. You might be in the situation than you are, but dream bigger, you know, plan to live bigger. So that's what I always did. I knew I knew where I was wasn't where I wanted to be. So I feel like just having that motivation in yourself, you know, everybody else could tell it for you, but you have to believe in yourself and believe it yourself. So it really starts with you, but, you know, I feel like just coming from where I come from, it gives a lot of people hope. You know, I feel like a lot of people think they can make it now. And if you just believe in yourself, you will, you know. Yeah, I, I absolutely do. That, that's a, a very responsible attitude for a very young man. I'm just wondering where you got that from, from your your family, or how did you become sort of what you are in, in that regard? Yeah, definitely my family, you know, pushing, preaching character to me. You know, it's, it's best to just be the best version of yourself. You know, I'm comfortable with the person I am. I'm comfortable with where I came from and how I grew up. So, you know, I feel like just me being comfortable with myself and just understanding and knowing a lot of things of how I grew up and how that molded me to be the person I am today and just never looking back, but always looking forward and, you know, came a long way, but a long way to go, you know, just kind of that mentality, you know, just never trying to dwell on what happened or what's happening and just knowing that there's positive to come in the future. Great. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time as always. Appreciate you. Thank you. Next question goes to Aaron Rose from SI.com. Hey, Delano. Congrats. As everyone else has said, it's, Exciting. Um, you mentioned sort of being Canadian, maybe there are some disadvantages playing basketball and stuff. Can you elaborate on those? What disadvantages does a Canadian kid have trying to break it in the NBA? You know, I feel like it starts with like, with the high school situation. You know, I feel like there's only a certain amount of high schools in, in Canada alone, and not so much Canada, you know, Toronto's kind of the big basketball city of of Canada, but just Canada, there's only a certain amount of high schools where you can go to really get exposure. And, you know, I feel like that's one of the things. And, you know, in America, when you're playing high school, you could play anywhere in high school, you know, people will come see you and just not being able to get people who you want. You know, everybody who plays high school basketball has division one dreams. And if you're not put in positions to, you know, make coaches come see you, and that's how it is in Canada, just playing high school basketball, you could be as good as you want sometimes, but, you know, it's just not enough. And it's not on the kids, it's just the level of exposure that we have. But I feel like with social media transcending and just it becoming so much of a social world through our phones that people across the border are getting much more to see us, you know, getting to see a lot more of us. And, you know, I feel like that's opening people's eyes. And, you know, a lot of people think Canadians are soft. So, you know, whenever we go and show out for ourselves, you know, we change that narrative. But I feel like just that and just understanding that we come from a different country. So it's kind of, it's always going to be harder than, you know, where the, where the sports mainly played. So, you know, I feel like just having to fight through those barriers as a young kid and trying to figure it out for yourself is definitely hard. Thank you. I'm going to do three more questions for you, Delano. Uh, first one goes to Eric Kareen from The Athletic. Hey, Delano. Nice to meet you, and uh, congratulations. It must have been awesome. Um, the Raptors have drafted a few guys most recently before yourself, Malachi Flynn, who have gone through redshirt seasons. Uh, what did that 
year, I, I mean, you're, you're playing and practicing, but you're not in games. What did it allow you to do that you wouldn't otherwise have been able to do? Mm -hmm. You know what, you know, another blessing for having Coach Hoiberg, you know, he told me just to use this year as a development year, like how I would might have to use my first year in the NBA or wherever I end up playing. So he kind of just always preached it to me that way to just never live into the moment and knowing you're not playing games. But coming in as a rookie, you might not you might not play games and it might be game day and you might just have to work out and get your own work and knowing you might not get into the game tonight. So I feel like just him preaching those things to me and just understanding the longevity of it and just not living in the moment, just understanding that your time is going to come, just continue to grind and put in that work. So, you know, just again, him being a player, you know, we could talk on a player to player level. It doesn't always have to be player to coach, you know, it could be friend to friend or, you know, even a brother, like I always preach about Coach Hoiberg. So, you know, he was just a blessing to me throughout that whole process and just, you know, help guide me and help me more understand more of how to reach my goals and understand what it's going to take, you know, and how, how to get there and how the year off is going to help in the ways that, you know, I might not have thought it was or thought it was just a year back or a year of a setback. So, you know, I feel like just him being very transparent with me helped me get through that year for sure. How were you able to scratch that competitive itch that, you know, usually comes from playing at games? Uh, what were you like in, in like the scrimmages or whatever that you could do? Yeah, you know, I, you know, I participated in a lot of the practices, you know, I was literally there every practice. So it wasn't like I was out of it or like participated where I could, you know, I was always involved and he always put me in to help give another look for the for the team that was playing you know for the guys that we had at the time who were playing in the season so you know he, i always feel like he put me in to help the guys you know a lot you know more than i probably would have uh, for, for any other red shirt so i feel like just me being more proactive and just him telling me you know continue to be vocal continue to lead and although i'm not playing just use this for practice for next year and just understand that you know build good habits you know every day coming in being vocal being that energy guy it's going to lead for years to come and you know it did and it helped to help for next year make it easier for me to be vocal every day coming out so you know i'm grateful for my red shirt year and i'm happy i had it and i'm blessed to have had it with coach Hoiberg. congrats again to you and your family thank you i appreciate it next question goes to nick from global news hi there congratulations and welcome back uh, to toronto um i want to touch base with you about you sort of alluded to this in your video on uh, twitter but about your bringing up in Rexdale and you've talked about in this news conference. I, I was reading a piece that um, you sort of taken some of those memories with you. I think you had 45 on your jersey representing the Kipling bus. Um, uh, perhaps you could just sort of reflect on, um, you know, your upbringing in Rexdale for those who maybe don't know your personal story. And you, you said some of these gyms you went to, perhaps you can talk, share some of those go-to places or um, yeah, your upbringing. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, like I said, I'm from the, the north side of Rexdale. Kipling and the 45 comes from the 45 Kipling bus and that runs I'm from Kipling and Mount Olive so it runs through Mount Olive like right that's the stop and it's the 45 Kipling so when I was trying to think of a number that means something to me just you know I was, I was kind of getting tired of just wearing numbers you know I feel like you could always make meaning of something so I felt like you know once that clicked to me it stuck you know everyone who knows me knows I'm a guy who takes where I'm from with me with pride you know so I feel like that was it. And just, you know, gyms right across the street, we had the Rexdale Community Hub. That was literally across the street from me. Like everyone from my neighborhood goes there like every single day. That's where I grew up. Like after school, that's where you go. That's where everyone goes. You, They get you in the gym. They make sure you do your schoolwork and stuff like that. So, you know, just, just being in those neighborhoods, just take advantage of those community centers. I know right now there's COVID, so probably a lot of it's not open, but just I just took advantage of those community centers, keeping myself from outside of the neighborhood, you know, just always take advantage. We have um, the North Kipling Community Center, which is like two minutes away from that one. So, you know, the way they have it scheduled is the Rexdale Community Hub will have like runs or drills or like training on one day and they'll have it mixed up with each other so it could be back and forth from each gym. And it's like two minutes from each other, like a two, three minute walk. So, you know, just being able to take advantage of those community centers to just keep yourself off the street, keep yourself out of trouble. You know, I feel like that was the blessing for me that I had. I had those community centers to just keep me in the gym. So I feel like, yeah, just, you know, staying, staying close and tight knit with where I came from is just going to be the best, you know, looking forward. And, you know, I'm looking to do a lot of stuff for my neighborhood for the, for time to come and, you know, give backs and stuff like that. So it's going to be great, man. Yeah, that's great. And um, now that you're back in Toronto, any places you're looking forward to reconnecting with? I mean, it's probably been a little while. So just wondering, um, you know, where you're probably going to head to now that you're here um right now i just kind of just been soaking up the time with my family you know just kind of living with my family and just 
just letting them, you know, soak it up. Everybody's just so happy for me. So I want to see everyone who's happy for me. You know, I don't want to be like, you know, I'm from here. I'm from Toronto. So, you know, a lot of people know me. So I kind of want to give everyone the chance to see me because, you know, uh, business is about to start. You know, we have summer league coming and, you know, I know what time it is and I know that I have to continue to grind. But I know that a lot of people are going to want to see me. So I'm just trying to take out the time that I can for them. But for time to come, I'm going to want to do give backs in my neighborhood and Mount Olive neighborhood and, you know, for, for that and stuff like that. And we look forward to following that. Congratulations and all the best to you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Final question is going to go to Derek from the CBC. Uh, thanks. Congrats once again, Delano, on, on getting drafted. I'm a fellow West End kid here uh, from, from, the, from the West End, from Rexdale, uh, about on, on Dixon as well. I um, just wanted to, to kind of get a sense of, you know, what do you think, um, you know, being drafted and, and coming from where you're from uh, means for the kids in Rexdale? You mentioned that, you know, a lot of times Canadian kids get the reputation that they might be soft. Uh, what what is it what is it that people don't get right or that they're missing about kids from Rexdale? I feel like just just having the picture the image of like Canada or Toronto or wherever it just has this only this one side of it where everyone's like super nice but not understanding that there's real neighborhoods where you have to come out and you know put on like a tough face so you have to come out every day and like you know pursue something like or portray the way that you're not just to show that you're not weak and you know that was kind of somewhere that I came from I had to come outside every day and you know show that I'm a strong man and be a be a young man at a very early age and make some real decisions for yourself so I feel like a lot of people don't understand that coming from Canada a lot of people just think it's Canada you know like it's very nice over there and everyone's so nice but it's not always like that and I feel like just growing up in Rex though it kind of gives you that you know that extra push that extra grit just knowing that I have like you know like I have a, a different upbringing you know I, I went through a lot of things there's a lot of trials a lot of tribulations coming out of there so I feel like just having that grind to that extra push and that extra that just that extra grit to give you to just go the extra mile you know and just as a follow-up, um, were there any other bus routes that you were considering, the 37, 73, 58? No, no. I, honestly, like, nah, just the 45, because that was the one that, you know, ran through where I was from. You know, I wasn't going to pick, like, any, like, the 46 or nothing like that. Like, you know, just going to pick the one that I was from.